Erev Tov Chavrin, my name is Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Already made mainstream media, something that we should have picked up on ourselves there before it did, but it's all right. Uh, unfortunately, it's a very tragic day for the U.S. and uh, British forces inside of Syria. Uh, one British, one U.K. force has been killed by an IED that was planted near Mumbai, uh, very concerning to me because the Turkish-backed forces may be the ones that are actually responsible for this IED attack on U.S.-U.K. forces. They're actually U.K. force that was embedded with U.S. Special Forces there uh, patrolling the Mumbai area. Now, there were just the other day, there were seen U.S. forces withdrawing from Mumbai, uh, but undoubtedly not all of them. And, of course, the French forces, uh, French President Macron has met with the Kurdish YPG and has vowed to send in his forces and protect them inside of Syria. Finally, someone willing to step up to the plate with the uh, the uh, Kurdish people inside of Syria there. And now, President Trump did maintain keeping the U.S. military with the Kurds in Mumbai there in northern Syria near the Euphrates River, uh, but unfortunately not willing, neither Russia, either one, willing to protect the Kurds up in Afrin while they were practically genocide in that locality by the Turkish military and their uh, their their backed militants fighting in the area, including the Free Syrian Army, who is trained by the United States over in Jordan. Uh, but very troubling indeed, Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra forces, and several other forces fighting in that area. Now, of course, I find this rather odd, the timing of this, because... President Trump was just stating yesterday that the United States is going to pull out of Syria. We need to get out. We need to go home. You know, the last time President Trump said this, next thing you know, there was an alleged chemical attack. And then the next thing you know after that, uh, President Trump is changing his tune and sending in 59 cruise, uh, not cruise missiles, but yeah, cruise missiles, uh, tomahawks, that is into uh, Syria against the Syrian government for the alleged chemical use of chemical weapons was actually carried out by the al-Nusra uh, affiliates there, uh, backed by, no doubt, as we pointed out from uh, Seymour Hersh's investigation by CIA uh, officials working with those militants uh, to use chemical weapons. Now, we see an IED placed on a roadside there that has killed an American soldier and also a British soldier, wounding five others. You just can't help but wonder if there's not a deep state trying to keep Trump in Syria. Uh, I say that because, of course, <laughs> again, it's just kind of odd, the timing of this, the same time we saw this last time and what happened, and then now we're seeing this all of a sudden. Uh, Trump is wanting to call the, the troops back home. And the State Department was saying, we haven't heard anything about withdrawal from Syria. Well, <laughs> I can believe why they would say that, because we're steadily building new military bases in Syria, especially to the east of the Euphrates. So, yeah, it doesn't look like the deep state is planning on moving anywhere. But President Trump might say one thing, but the deep state's got a totally different perspective. Well, all you have to do is make sure uh, we have casualties in the U.S. and the U.K. there to turn that table around and to dig our heels in even deeper and to push Trump into doing exactly what they want him to do. So waiting to see how President Trump reacts to that. Now, according to the Amman News, 11 on newspaper there, says uh, photos have emerged showing U.S. motorized forces patrolling the front line with Turkish-backed rebels near the city of Mumbai in northern Aleppo province. Uh, said the stepped-up U.S. patrols in defense of the Pentagon-backed proxies comes as Ankara is making serious threats about launching an offensive to expel Syrian Kurdish forces from Mumbai and its surrounding countryside. Uh, there are reports that Turkish-backed rebel groups guided by Ankara are already making preliminary moves for a major military operation against U.S.-led forces in Mumbai, 
Recently, two troops of the U.S. coalition, at least one confirmed to be an American, were killed and five others injured. Now, that's what we just spoke about here a moment ago. Uh, but here we are, the U.S. forces there in the background on this picture there. And, of course, down where the photo is being taken, this is where your jihadists are at uh, on the road there. So, yes, U.S. forces very close to them. And so that kind of makes me wonder if you if Turkish backed forces didn't actually plant the IED device. And if the deep states involved, you have to remember the CIA has very close ties to the United States. Uh, excuse me. Uh, CIA has very close ties to the Turkish government. You know, speaking of that, we kind of there is one particular article here. Let me see if this is the one here. Um, no, that's not the one I'm looking. Here we go right here. From the Duran, killed in Turkey, no investigation two years after suspicious death of American journalist uh, Serena Shem. This is the lady that actually busted the rat line by the CIA working with the Turkish government. It says, uh, it says here the unbelievable tiny company is, uh, excuse me, although all signs point to foul play, indeed murdered by Turkish intelligence. Until now, the U.S. government has neither conducted nor demanded an inquiry into the events of the alleged car accident, which Turkish officials say was the cause of Shem's death, let alone offer condolences to the family. Serena Shem was at the time reporting on Ayan al-Arab Kobani from the Turkish side. She was, in her own words, one of the first, if not the first, on the ground to report on Takfiri militants going in through the Turkish borders. These include not only ISIS, but also terrorists from the so-called Free Syrian Army. And Shem's sister, Fatime Shem, stated in 2015 she caught them bringing an ISIS high-ranked high members in Syria from Turkey into camps which are supposed to be Syria, Syrian refugee camps. Sir, uh, Serena Shem's January 2013 exposed Turkey's pivotal role in Syria's insurgency. Press TV report from the inside Turkey showed footage of what she estimated to be 300 semi-trucks awaiting militants to empty them out, including the testimony explaining how Turkey enables the crossing of foreign terrorists freely into Syria. Spoke of the funneling of arms via the encircling U.S. air base in Turkey to terrorists in refugee camps or on through to Syria. And highlighted the issue of terrorist training camps portrayed as refugee camps guarded by the Turkish military. Shem named the World's Food Organization as the NGOs whose trucks were being used to funnel terrorist arms into Syria and stated this is her last interview just one day before being killed. Notably in that interview, she also explicitly stated that she feared for her life because the Turkish intelligence had accused her of being a spy, she told the press TV. Unfortunately, this gallant woman who was brave enough to tell the world, an American, no doubt, was willing to tell just how deep and how sinister this plot was going. No doubt Seymour Hirsch indebted to her uh, courageous work as well as many other journalists uh, for being able to help bring out the truth about what really has been going on with uh, U.S. US back operatives there working with the Turkish government, even the encirclic air base being used for terrorists. No wonder why they wanted to silence her. What a brave woman. God bless her soul and may she um, be rewarded for being honest and true. Uh, going back to what we were speaking about earlier, though, also Turkey says France could become a target of Turkey in Syria if Macron deploys soldiers to Mumbai. Uh, senior Turkish officials said on Friday that French pledged to help stabilize the region of northern Syria controlled by Kurdish dominant forces amounted to support for terrorism and could make France a target of Turkey. Very troubling. French backing of the Syrian Democratic Forces Dominated by the Kurdish YPG has angered Ankara at a time when it's fighting the YPG in northern Syria. Wish somebody would step up and push Turkey out of the country, but you know, I don't know if that's going to ever happen anyway. But at least France is willing to do this much. Uh, also, we have here, according to Kurdistan 24, French soldiers stand at a French base outside the northern uh, Malian city of Gao on January the 2nd, 2015. 
This article here talks about how the state-run and and the news agency revealed the locations of a number of French soldiers based in Syria, Kurdistan, Royova, on Friday, just one day after French President Emmanuel Macron reiterated support for the Kurdish-led forces there. So, I guess the Turkish government is wanting the world to know they know exactly where French and American forces are. But will the Turkish government really go against the U.S. or French forces? Or is this all just a game? Is it just a play? Is this to get more forces in the region there for an eventual takedown of Damascus? I don't know. I, I watch this carefully and cautiously. You know, they talk about, I, I heard someone say that they're demonizing President Putin, saying that he is the Gog of, you know, he is Gog of Magog, and they're waiting for the demons to come into Putin to cause him to come against Israel. Do you not, does anybody, is anybody really that blind? I mean, here you have a man that professes Jesus Christ as his Messiah, that has a good relationship with Israel, uh, trying to fight for the freedom of the Syrian people, which is for the for the very mothers of Israel, the matriarchs of Israel. We're talking about Rebecca, Leah, Zilpah, uh, Rachel, uh, all the mothers of Israel, all the matriarchs are from Syria. And here we have a president that's willing to fight for the descendants of Israel, for their family members. And he's an ally of Israel. And he's even warned Prime Minister, excuse me, he's warned President Assad not to strike at Israel. But on the other hand, just contrary to that, you have this demon over here, Mr. Erdogan, meets with the Pope of Rome, said they both have one thing in common, that's against Jerusalem, against the Jewish people, and he's calling on 57 Muslim nations to be able to come and fight to take Jerusalem if need be. And he'll also rally together any NATO member nations as well. And he's there to try to destroy anybody that's even associated with the Jewish people. You, I mean, come on. You want to look for somebody that's possessed of a devil, that's, that thinks he's a caliphate, that thinks he's a, probably the Mahdi or whatever the thing may be there, that thinks he should go liberate Jerusalem from the Jewish people? The guy's standing right there in front of your face and half the people can't even got enough, ain't got enough eyes to see anything. Why? Because you've been taught by... These hirelings that are supposed to be uh, shepherds over the flock that have been telling you now for the last, what, hundred years now that it's Russia that's the king of the north. Or it's Russia is Gog of Magog. When any other time in biblical history, it was either Rome or Turkey or, you know, in fact, all the nations that are mentioned in there, most of them are associated with modern day Turkey. Jeez. The prince is a Roman prince, so I do believe that. And they have met together. There's your Gog of Magog. So why is everybody waiting for Putin to be possessed of some kind of devils? I don't say that Putin's an angel by no means. Please don't get me wrong. Uh, I don't want to go there at all. But the point is, is when it comes to seeing someone that is certainly bent, certainly uh, demon possessed from a spiritual perspective Erdogan seems to fit the bill a whole lot better than anybody else and yet people are still looking somewhere else uh, very troubling anyway uh, not a very good situation that we see going on right now and our condolences to the families uh, the American soldier that was killed in uh, in Syria as well as the UK soldier that was killed, our condolences to the family there, and of course our condolences to all the Kurds that have died uh, in the onslaught of the Turkish government against these people, and all the Syrians as well that have lost their lives. Let's not forget them. Let's not forget the children and the mothers that have been killed in this country. 
these, if you are Jewish, if you are an Israelite, if you are from any of the 12 tribes of Israel, remember, these are the families of the children of Laban and their descendants and their relatives. There are relatives as well. Pray for them as well. And the Christians of Syria. Don't forget about the Christians of Syria. That are, that many of them are the remnants of the house of Israel. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Don't forget to support the broadcast. We need your help keeping this on the air. Uh, we can't do it without you guys. You're the ones that make it happen. IsraeliNewsLive.org, or you can mail us right at the end of every broadcast. Our address in Europe as well as in America. If you send it to America, we will be returning at the end of next month there. We will be able to pick up our mail. They're holding it for us, so you know, please help us to keep this going. Be going into some very deep teachings uh, coming up now that we're in the Passover season. Can't wait to share those things with you. I'm Stephen Benoon.